Good evening, everybody. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste. Welcome to the session. We go to chapter four. We start with an invocation. Kindly close your eyes. Inhale and exhale. Relax the body. Feel yourself in the presence of the teacher. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, to Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to Buddha Kwanin, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to Lord Christ, Lord Yehoshua Bamiriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to the great teachers and great masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of knowledge, light, and power, to our soul and divine self. We humbly offer ourselves as instruments to become instruments to do your work rapidly, properly, effectively. Today, we ask for your help to have greater clarity, deeper understanding of your priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become a better instrument in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste, guys. Clean. Did the live thing, right? All right. So, chapter four, going back to what we spoke about um, the other day, very simply. We mentioned how um, this the spleen chakra has six sections, six spokes, or six petals uh, in the last session. And uh, we mentioned that they, it is so brilliant that uh, in those days they would actually call it uh, glowing, glowing like a sun or something like a sun, right? Um, so as we all remember the property of a spleen from Masucho's uh, pranic healing, the spleen actually absorbs uh, this vitality globules or prana that we talk about. It absorbs this from the atmosphere, from the surroundings, it then, like I said, instead of disintegrating, we use the word digesting, it digests the prana and then distributes it through the respective channels. Actually through the, there are five channels we're gonna go and talk about. They're gonna send this prana out to the remaining part of the body. Now this prana is very vital uh, for the sustenance of our physical form or the dense physical body, right? And so if you look at the image there, it actually shows how um, these round little things, yes, little circles, trying to enter through the center of our uh, spleen chakra. And so uh, the vitality globules, as you see, these globules are drawn into the spleen center, right in the middle. And then from there, it's broken into seven components or seven atoms, as they call it, or seven parts of that prana. And this particular atom each of them the seven varieties are then uh, you know remember that spinning thing that Amit spoke about that secondary uh, motion that happens on the chakra it goes through that and then gets distributed through that chakra to the rest of the body now the seven um, atoms that are created or the seven types of energies that are created or seven colors are basically what you and I already know except for a couple of changes here so we know about violet we know about blue green yellow orange and red However, red is divided into what they call dark red and rose red. Now, the, these colors um, are then further divided or further absorbed slightly differently. So it says it has to be observed that the division are not exactly those, we're talking about the colors, uh, those that we know with reference to the rainbow or uh, the solar spectrum. But they say this is what they notice as people evolve right? And in their astral body, the higher, the higher levels of the astral body, remember the, the higher um, levels, the colors are most similar to what they see in the higher astral, um, in the lower mental and the higher mental, which is called the causal. Now in this, uh, we notice with reference to Vibhgyo, that's the solar spectrum, the indigo is not mentioned. However, they say in this book uh, that Indigo is divided between violet and blue, and uh, in Master's book, it's written differently. So we'll come to that in a bit. And of course, the mentioning of red being um, broken into dark red and rose red. Now, each of these 
um, each of these, you know, the six sections that are the six petals has a duty to perform, right? And so it says here, uh, this accounts for six kinds of atoms only. And the seventh variety uh, that is colored rose pink is dispatched. This is the only one that's dispatched to the hub or the center of the, of the uh, chakra. Whereas the others go through a different medium. Now this rose red, um, like I mentioned last time to just uh, repeat, is the one that actually goes and um, it is distributed all over our nervous system. And our nervous system, like we remember, is a very important system within the body. Not really physical as we understood, it actually comes from the astral body and is uh, also very important as a bridge between the etheric body, uh, the, the organs or the, or the uh, sense organs in the brain, and of course, the astral and the mental bodies. So this is, is very crucial. And um, they also mentioned that the rose red is like the life, the life of the nervous system. And so when you have more of this rose red within the nervous system, then you are healthy, you feel good. However, when it's insufficient, they say that the person becomes very sensitive and it becomes intolerant to certain noise uh, and also I think uh, touch, right? And I remember very vaguely this happening to me when I would, when, when I would have very, very high fever, yeah, right? I'm, I'm a bit delirious and I'm also very sensitive to the TV being on outside uh, my room or, uh, you know, when someone touches me, then I, I kind of jerk up. So it's all, I mean, that's the way I relate it, but yes, definitely um, there's sensitivity there. And then the, uh, the only thing that you can do for someone like that, who's going through that, they say, is to flood their nervous system with more rose pink uh, prana or energy. And they said, if a person uh, has this in abundance, right, uh, then that person would be very useful and good at healing. So I'll stop there and give it to Amit. Okay. Um... So basically, they're talking about the spleen uh, chakra. And apart from what Sumi says, we'll just uh, look at it more technically. Mm. Okay. So it has six pokes. So basically, the spleen has six petals. And um, now you're aware of how these petals are formed, right? It is formed, uh, don't forget what you learned in the previous chapter. It's formed through the spokes. Uh, the, through the force energy coming from the welling up from the astral or from the other dimension and coming through the chakra, holding the chakra in place and it forms a spoke. So it has six. Um, and uh, surprisingly, they reveal the existence of only one chakra. Um, they seem to be discussing only the front spleen chakra, not the back spleen chakra. All right. Um, now the spleen chakra, according to Master Chua, is the source of life energy for all the other chakras. All right, um, and it, it's, it's a very important chakra. Uh, and the same thing that Sumi said, and it has to do with absorbing vitality. It's very, very um, straightforward. The Advanced Burning Killing books talks about it, uh, about how it distributes it to the uh, other chakras. Uh, the chakra, the spleen is very important. That's why in Kabbalah, it's known as Netzak or power. And the reason it's called that is because, uh, sorry, victory, victory or uh, victory and power. Um, the reason is called that according to when Master Cho was teaching us, if I remember correctly, he says, when you clean and energize this one, uh, when a specialized healer cleans and energizes this one, the body is filled with power, more power. And because of that, the, uh, the body is victorious over the disease causing germs. So this is your seat for uh, victory and power for your physical uh, existence and life and the quality of your health. Okay. So that is about the spleen. Now, um, so the chakra has six spokes, all right? And between each spoke lies, um, so if you see six, one, two, three, four, five, six, you draw a circle with six divisions. Um, between each spoke, there's a, significant, there's a specific color, okay? So the spleen has actually six colors. Now, if I remember uh, what Master Joa says, he says the ratio of those six colors um, are in a certain mathematical, mathematical proportion, all right? Uh, so, for example, that's why in advanced learning healing, we don't project orange to the spleen. One level of truth in the class, we tell them, is because we don't want the energy to go to the head area. But and on another level, um, the, the spleen is, um, uh, the, the orange in the spleen is 
a certain mathematical proportion. We cannot, when you project it, it uh, changes the proportion of the colors and it creates problem. Uh, but we won't go into that in too much detail, but just try and remember it. So coming back to the topic, each quadrant has a specific color, right? Now here, although they've not spoken about it directly, when the chakra due to the inner force, all right, from the physical permanent seed undulates and moves back, it pulls in vitality globules. You see the force that they talk about in the previous chapter makes the chakra move front and back, you know? And uh, when you look at under, it's like a snake. You know how the snake moves like this and like this. So it moves forward and moves back. So at what, when it moves forward, it pulls in the vitality globules. All right, it's sucked in. Now, uh, of course, um, considering the law of nature, when something is moving in a certain way and then it moves in another, uh, it, it, it has to move in the other way as well, right? So there'll be a gap. So when it moves in, it, it stops for a split second. And these vitality globules get distributed to, into each quadrant with each color, okay? And from that, it moves, all right? So um, during that time, the particles are sent into each quadrant and the white prana passes through it, changes or transmutes into that particular color prana, that color that it is, takes on the color, all right? And, um, and then what, what the book describes, or I don't think it's this book, or what, what actually in Theosophy they describe is the spokes are actually used as delivery mechanisms. So that color, will go in that, that prana that's been transformed will go into the spoke. So say the spoke and go directly into the um, major meridian where it's going to which chakra, which we'll learn uh, later on in the chapter. So you have six spokes, so it goes into different directions. All right. Um, now, so there are basically five, right? What I think there is uh, a quote by, yeah, this is in uh, Hidden Side of Things by Charles Ledbetter. So it talks about the movement of the force, which is caused due to that force that we spoke about earlier. All right. And these are basically six, six colors. Now, um, what about the center now? Or maybe we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I'm just giving the center now. Or later. Okay. So let's go to the next page. So the different colors that it changes into is basically um, the or you know red, orange, yellow, green. That's what Master Chua says. Here it says red. Actually, in uh, Bishop Ledbetter has changed it. This Arthur Powell has put it as it is, but actually it's red that's divided into rose red and dark red. All right, uh, but we know that that is not a hundred percent. Now this is where it differs from the pranic healing point of view. All our colors seem to be there, all right, um, except red. Red is differentiated. So um, now the author does mention later on that the shade of the colors are not like those found in normal dispersion of light, but it's much more lighter and subtle. That's why he compares it to higher frequencies. So that means that all the white particles that go into each quadrant, not all of them are completely cover, you know, uh, transformed into color. Only a certain percentage percentage of them is converted into color within that quadrant all right so maybe you know it means that um so so that's that's what it means hmm. are you have you spoken about the center yet or you want to talk about that after this i did the rose pink going through that mm, but what about this image you spoke about this image no okay so you want to go into that so so we'll talk about that image in a bit all right, so I think that's, that's it. Each of this with one variety. Okay, the rose pink, I'll, I'll come back to the rose pink. Uh, I, I want to tie it into the delivery system, okay? Look, you have to understand that not everything about the spleen can be revealed at this point. Um, I might be wrong one time in my experience. I, I'm not sure, is it the crown that's only up and down or is it all the chakras? Um, I think you said all your chakras. So what I plants. saw was, um, uh, what I saw was this, you have to understand on one level of truth, this is like this, or another level, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you have uh, the chakra like this, and then at the back, it's like superimposed. So when the chakra is rotating this way, it's pulling in, this chakra is rotating the other way to give it out. You understand? This one is pulling in like this, this one is pulling, so it's taking, this one is taking it in and it's double-sided. So this one simultaneously while it's taking in, it's pulling it out. So there's continuous movement. What's pulled in is distributed. So on one hand, the chakra is receiving energy. Simultaneously, 
that energy is receiving, it cannot hold, it has to deliver at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? The energy is coming in, that energy that comes in has to be delivered at that point. Otherwise, it, after it, it, it can't take any more. So while it's coming in at the back, there's a simultaneous rotation in another way, all right? Either the bottom or top or one behind the other. This is moving this way, this is moving this way. So it's like this. So this one pulls it in, this one simultaneously is giving it out and in the middle, the transmutation transformation process is happening and then we'll come to the center. Okay. So you can yeah, so if you look at the image, uh, we're basically trying to understand how this distribution happens, right? So the colors that I mentioned earlier, we have in the center, uh, the most important, the rose red, uh, which is also the atom that actually attracts those other six. That's the most important, the rose red is always in the center. It goes uh, through also the center of the chakra to, to go onto the nervous system and be used by the nervous system to sustain health. Now, um, besides that, we have five more streams, all right? So the first stream is where uh, you have the violet and the blue that combine together. And so the violet and the blue move towards the throat region, yes? And so that channel uh, gets distributed all the way up to our throat. The second is the green. Now the green goes towards the navel or the abdominal region. So not only the, uh, the navel chakra, but also the organs I presume that are controlled under that get enough of that energy. And then the yellow goes all the way to the heart. Yes, and so uh, the yellow moves, and remember for us, the heart is both the front heart and the back heart. And then the orange connects with, remember we called, there was light, the rose red and the dark red. So orange, you know, along with the dark red, moves towards uh, the base of the spine, which is the Muladhara chakra, the basic chakra, which is also important for that particular point. And the rose red, as I said, to the nervous system. So the, the, these are the five streams through which the, um, the different digested prana starts to move. Yeah, so just to repeat myself, violet and blue, going towards the throat, green to the navel chakra, yellow to the heart, orange red to the basic. Now, once these are distributed, yes, the prana is then absorbed, right, to be utilized to, to sustain health for that chakra and the organs under that chakra. And so they say it's just like um, electric energy that is in, for example, your phone. And then every time you use your phone, the electric energy is absorbed to see to that we can actually use this instrument effectively. And so they say uh, the prana gives life to the etheric body or the etheric double uh, through the dense spot and, and also through that into the dense body. The degree of health of parts of our body depends, yes, yes, is determined purely by the volume of this prana that is actually distributed. And so it says the bearing of this significant fact on the maintenance of physical vigor, right? Uh, and the cure of disease is clearly very important. And then they, they, they're going to emphasize because they find that this is such a key and important aspect. They will talk about it in a different chapter that will come ahead. Now, um, the atom bearing the, the rose red, yes, it goes, uh, like we said, towards the nervous system. And as it passes over the nervous system, it slowly gets absorbed more and more and more and becomes very, very pale. And ultimately, when it, it has nothing left, then it is discharged right? It is released out of the energy body uh, through the, the pores of the skin. And at the pores of the skin, as we know in pranic healing, lies what we call the health rays and altogether making it the health aura. And so from that, it is then released out of the system, out of the physical and energy system of a particular person. And they say that this um, aura that they see, they see is a pale bluish white color. And the image of this is in man, visible and invisible, page 128, they say. And uh, so, okay, go ahead. Okay, so uh, about the whole distribution thing. So we'll come back to it. You see the, you remember the six atoms from chapter three, two, three. Three white out here, right? The six atoms and the central one, right? When it comes in, these are split. Chapter two, okay. Yeah. The, these are these are these are these are split, right? Um, and now uh, they're taken into each 
spoke and then delivered to different parts of the body, all right? Um, now, the central one is the original atom. If you remember, what happened was, that was the original atom that started uh, being infused with uh, a massive amount of prana, and due to the law of attraction, and due to the second aspect, which is attraction also, it pulled in the six atoms and stayed in place. So that is basically the, you can say on a very low level, the most powerful one. All right, the, the uh, highly charged physical atom. Uh, and this one gets pulled into the center. Now, where does it go? Where does it go? And how does it go there? My understanding, and I could be wrong, my understanding is that it goes to the Ming Min. All right? The Ming Min, you have to keep in mind that they're working on a system which does not have the Ming Min, solar plexus, and some of the chakras, which are extremely important. The solar plexus and Ming Min are the two most uh, important distributing centers that we have. If you want energy for, to go from the lower chakra to the upper chakra, you have to pass it through the solar plexus uh, or the Ming Main. And even from the Ming Main, it passes through the back solar. Solar plexus is very important. Um, so from the, from, the, uh, from the spleen, it gets pulled in and it goes to the Ming Main. From the Ming Main, it gets transmuted. You have to remember the Ming Main. Now, why is it going there? The Ming Main, number one, is your logistical center. It's your distribution house. All right, it's the part which uh, delivers everything everywhere. And also it's the, it's the hod or the glory aspect of you. So this energy is transmuted, transformed and changed into what the body requires probably. Uh, there are a lot of <laughs> stuff that are missing, there are gaps and it gets delivered to different parts of the body. We know from advanced pranic healing that from the Ming Main, it goes directly into all the bones and all the different uh, parts. Okay, so that's why if a person has arthritis, you have to always check the Ming Main because if you heal the basic, you heal the solar effects, you heal all of these chakras, you don't do the Ming Main. The basic is energized, it pulls in more ground prana, but to deliver that extra ground prana to the uh, to the um, musculoskeletal, muscular cell system or to the bones, all right, and even for uh, you need the uh, you need the uh, Ming Main to be healthy, all right, or at least not congested or blocked, all right. Now, so um. So, so that, that's basically how I sense it happens. So a portion of it from the center, it goes to the Ming Min and it goes to different parts of the body because that's one of the major places where it can access the whole uh, system very easily, all right? Um, so there are basically, from my point of view, from a pranic healing perspective and healing perspective, there are major, uh, it makes sense because there are these major, major uh, meridians. Like from the spleen, there's a major meridian directly attached to the Ming Min. We know this already. Okay, um, that is why it is written several times in the book, basic and advanced pranic healing, that you do not energize the Ming Main of a person because the hypertension, you know, the, the, the blood pressure may go up, uh, or you don't um, energize uh, the Ming Main of a person who has hypertension. So it shows you there's a direct meridian from the spleen to the Ming Main. The moment you energize it, even without intention, even without direction, it goes straight there. So that means there's definitely energy from the, that is taken in from the spleen going to the Ming Min. All right, so that is number one. Uh, number two, you have, that's the Ming Min to the, so you have the spleen to the Ming Min. Then number two channel, you have the, the spleen to the navel. All right, uh, so basically it's spleen, navel, perineum, basic. All right, now this serves two purposes. Um, number one, it services and uh, gives energy to the lower chakras. Number two, it gets energy from the ground. Now here, they're only looking at the aspect of air prana or vitality globule from the air, it seems. It does not talk about absorption of prana from the ground, which is a very, very important aspect of, um, of the physical health. Uh, without ground prana, your muscles, your bones, your tissues will start to deteriorate. Even with air prana, it's not sufficient enough to sustain the muscles, the bones, the tissues. You need ground prana. Both are vitality globules, all right? You have air prana, ground prana, solar prana. Air prana, ground prana are vitality globules, uh, but all three, uh, solar prana, solar prana, but all three are white prana, okay? Um, the ground prana is required to sustain the form, the physical dense form. So that's why it's very surprising he has not put it because it, it is, I think, more essential to the survival of the etheric body than, um, than um, air prana. If you see many people get older, their basic chakra as they grow older, you know, as they're younger is very elastic, but as they grow older, it's not as elastic. 
and uh, the absorption of ground product is very minimal. And the perineum most of the time is blocked because they keep sitting in different places. So because of that, they have severe uh, issues with the lower chakras. So you see they have prostate issue, they have their uterus removed, some other issue or the other with the lower energy centers, which has to do with sustenance of the body, digestion issues. Um, all right, so that is basically it. So you have the ming main to the spleen, you have the navel to the spleen, all right? Um, um, and also there's, a, there, there's another sub-channel that goes from uh, spleen, navel, ming main. I don't know where, I think two, three times in the advanced body killing book, it's written, be careful, uh, don't energize, then be careful while energizing the navel of a, a hypertension patient. As you know, the, if from the spleen it goes to the navel, when it goes to the navel, there's a meridian called the belt meridian, which goes directly to the ming main. Okay, so that is another major channel. And then you have the spleen to the solar plexus channel, and then you have the spleen to the throat channel, all right? And then you have the spleen to the heart channel, all right? So that's why, you see, sometimes it's not, directly written in advanced panic and incident from the heart you can energize all, all parts of the body or the whole part is vitalized vitalized that means that from the heart there are channels so from the spleen there's channels of the heart as well okay so that is basically uh, five okay now what about the center this whole rosy red concept i have no idea whether it's rosy red or not um red is actually vitality dynamic growth uh it is uh, the color of the the energy probably to do with vitality or sustenance of the nervous system, the physical body, the muscular tissues, everything. Because here they're missing out a big portion of information. All right, so, um, but if you look at Master Choa's picture, I'll share the screen again. So if you look at Master Choa's picture, uh, here, um, the spleen is, when it's rotating, it's rosy red in the center. Now this is an image of a spleen that is moving really, really fast. So all the colors look like it's mixed, all right? And uh, when it's, from, from my understanding, when it's moving very, very fast, it is rosy red in color because there's a lot of energy going in, conversion is happening, and there's uh, dynamic activity happening. And dynamic activity is red, dynamicism, growth, um, so the body needs red prana for it to grow. The body needs a red prana for it to be healthy. Uh, the body needs red prana for the, to feed the muscles, the bones, the tissue, and uh, the, probably the nervous system. Um, so that is very important. But when the spleen is not moving very fast, the center is a coin, oh, it's still red. Okay, but in the Advanced Funny Killing book, if you look, it's violet. <laughs> this is from the uh, Spiritual Essence of Man. But sometimes it becomes less, it becomes more reddish, and then sometimes it becomes, uh, uh, almost violet, if I remember correctly from the basic and advanced book, you can, you can look it up. And here you can see the proportion is divided at a certain ratio, all right? And it's showing you the energy going into the center, all right? Um, here I put in the, the ground pranas, uh, just so that you, you understand that there is something missing from here, from our point of view, from a pranic healing point of view. Um, and it's very, very important for, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you see, it goes a portion of ground pride directed upward to the spine, uh, to the larger perineum, navel, and then to the spleen. So there's a major meridian there. That's one of the most merit important meridians while you're healing, by the way. And the soul, minor chakra, and basic are the major entry points for ground prana. So here it talks of only spleen as the major entry point for the body, but you have several entry points. But yes, the spleen is one of the major uh, entry points. The spleen, the basic, the soles of the feet, the back heart, where, where the lungs are, um, and of course, for divine energy, you have the crown. Right. Okay, you can go on. All right, so and now we're gonna talk about uh, the energy that we have taken in, right? So they say that if you want to have very good health, they use the word vigorous health, the spleen, when it continues to do its job, Yes, it then uh, continues to do its work so generously that the person has, has the ability to take in, yes, the prana and then digest and distribute it. But uh, in the process that he has so much of prana within him, himself, now when he uh, releases, right, through the health, from the pores of the skin, through the health rays, he actually uh, releases a lot of unused prana as well. Right, so out of those uh, seven, the amount that is con 
uh, absorbed by him is much less because he has so much coming into his plane chakra that he is literally a source of um, vitality or energy. And so if you have this person around you, he also keeps people around him healthy. And uh, they talk about, they say this process may be con considerably intensified by those who definitely set themselves to heal others. And so that's what I was saying. If you have this kind of energy on a regular basis, then you're able to uh, take care of healing others because you have this extra, para, extra prana uh, in abundance. Yes. And so that is something uh, that happens on a regular basis with these people. So having them around you actually is very beneficial for the health of a person. Now, uh, it is also well known that when this, this energy is expelled out of our um, aura, yes, according to them clairvoyantly, it actually looks like a grayish mist that comes out, that is released from around us. And uh, they say that depending on what's being released, they say it looks like geometric shapes to a lot of clairvoyants. And uh, it looks like a cube, especially when it's uh, sodium uh, chloride, which is salt, basically. So they say it's, it's, uh, it gets released. Now, this gets released from, yes, uh, the pores of the skin through perspiration or sweat and through the health rays. It gets uh, rushed and gushed out. And uh, at the same time, they also try to talk to us about uh, a person who is not in the same position as this vigorous, uh, healthy person. He says there could be others who aren't able, for whatever reason, their system is not able to sufficiently uh, absorb enough prana. So the quantity that, that comes into their system may not be enough. And so they say frequently and also unconsciously, uh, these people then act as a sponge. And if there are people around them that have vitality energy, then they start to absorb them. And so they call them, uh, they are unfortunately called uh, like vampires that actually suck the energy out of other people. Now, when they do that, obviously their chakras start feeling better. They feel uh, definitely healthier at that point. But uh, the author also mentions here, he says, you have to remember that the people who he sucks the energy out from, they start to feel lethargic or weak um, and uh, uh, tired, yes. And this, I think you and I do experience. So say, for example, you decide to go and meet someone in a hospital, right? Now, in say, for example, in that floor, there are like 20 beds. And in those 20 beds, your friend is probably number 10, which is there. But as you walk, right, as you walk from one to 10 all the way there, you realize that um, by the time you meet with your friend and come out of the hospital, you wonder why you're not feeling so great as when you went in. Because if you had abundance of energy, even if it was six o'clock in the evening, you know, and, and most of your day is over, your energy level is of better quality than the patients that are there in the hospital. And so all of them, we don't realize, they're like sponge that sap the energy out of you. And so you feel tired. At the same time, uh, when you are not feeling so good and you have friends who visit you and people who visit you, you feel good because you start to absorb it. And um, I remember one of the examples uh, in our manual was about um, Mahatma Gandhi, right? And they say, as you grow older, the ability also of the chakras, as Amit mentioned, reduces uh, with reference to the way it rotates, uh, with the ability to absorb prana, not just the spleen, but even other chakras. And so the person does not have that much, uh, 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 that much energy around. However, when he keeps his, uh, he keeps younger people, especially his niece, uh, nieces, I think, around him, they have so much exuberant uh, prana and energy uh, oozing out of them that that extra prana, which they don't need, could be used by, uh, in this case, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, keeping him actually uh, much healthier. And so it's like having this extra battery around, <laughs> you know, and you can get extra energy at any point. And the same applies uh, for me. I, I could be wrong, but it's also with uh, teachers who, who, who are around nursery kids and first graders who have so much energy. And so when you're around them, uh, yes, sometimes they, they, they make you run around. But actually, when you're in the presence of little kids as well, you feel really energized because they have a lot of prana that is excess and going out. Yeah. Should I move on? Or no, no, wait, wait, wait. Okay. okay. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Amit. Okay. So, um, 
I didn't mention about the atoms bearing the rose bit. So how are these atoms used? So let's say it goes to the main main. So it gets pulled into the center. These powerful, uh, highly charged particles goes to the uh, Ming Min, which is your logistic center. Always you remember your Ming Min is very important, but it was secret before. Without this Ming Min, your body cannot distribute much energy. It's uh, almost going to die. Uh, I mean, it would shut down actually, because um, uh, it's like uh, you have a lot of production, but not enough distribution, logistics. Like, you know, the lockdown that's happening in India and other parts of the world, you don't get certain products in the supermarket, not because it's not being produced, because the delivery mechanism has been either stopped or blocked. So that is the Ming Min. It's very, very essential. And if you don't get those products, you can't survive. All right. Um, so once it's uh, distributed to other parts of the body, what it says is, uh, this becomes paler and paler. It's just like being utilized, being absorbed by the body until only the shell is left. You have to remember that in the chapter number two, you had the, uh, the shell created by the and sustained by the logos. And then this was introduced by, uh, by prana, by vitality, right? So this vitality is now absorbed, right? And then you just have the shell left, which is still maintaining its shape because of the energy sustained from the logos. And then it travels to the pore. Now, if you remember from chapter one, uh, the etheric body is actually only a quarter of an inch above, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, outside your, your skin, right? Protruding outside your body. So it goes to the etheric body. Now, if you look at the etheric body clairvoyantly, there's supposed to be all these pores, outlets, right? From the etheric body. So it goes to that pore and then it emanates out. And this process of emanating out creates a streak of light. Right, and this process is what is known as the health ray. So that's why the health rays actually start from the surface of the body, but in reality, to be more technical, it should start about quarter an inch in front of the surface of the body where the etheric body's pore is located. All right, so, um, so that is how the energy is utilized, and we'll come to it when we talk about the health aura. I'll give you the quotations. Um, now, in a man in vigorous uh, health, the spleen does its work so generously that considerably that more the particles charged with prana uh, that the man requires use. Uh, these are used are discharged from body in all direction, uh, though the health aura with the part. Okay, so all this uh, is trying to say two things. Number one, the spleen, again, is a major source of health and vitality for the, uh, for the physical body. If you have a weak spleen, your, your physical body will be weak. All right. Number two, uh, if it's really, really strong, uh, then uh, what will happen is your body can only absorb a certain amount of uh, prana, right? Uh, but your spleen is so strong, it's absorbing more than what it needs. It will start to be removed also from the pores of your etheric body, all right, through the health rays. And what will happen is, um, uh, number one, when you need power, and this is not a one-time process, always remember, it's a continuous process. That's how the health rays are maintained. So you know a person with very strong health rays has a very powerful spleen and a very strong energy body because of the force. It's like water pressure coming out of the body. So much energy is coming out of the body that it does not need. So some people, you know, the health rays are very weak. Some people, the health rays are very, very strong. I think I have all of this. Let me just move. And uh, they're talking about healing, right? Yeah to heal others and to heal themselves. Um, okay, I think I made a mistake with the um, slide. Um, so here you have a quote from the Bible. I'll tie it in. Uh, it says, someone has touched me for I know that life energy, it's very popular in a basic class is how we start uh, started. Uh, but you have to look at it very carefully. What uh, what is being said is that power is required for healing to happen. Power is required for healing to happen. All right. Yes, healer can be transferred from, from patient, healer to patient, but you need power to heal. So power has gone out of Jesus. So she's like, yeah, the power came to me and with that power I'm healed. So if you have a very big aura, it's very good for self-healing also because that extra energy, if something happens to your body, can be used for healing. Number two, the energy that's coming out, you have to understand, is not air prana anymore. It is already probably partially digested prana. So it's very easy for an old person or a person who's weak and tired to absorb. Okay? It's, you have to understand the energy has already been transmuted by the main man and all that, and then it is sent out of the health rays. So, uh, and uh, out of the body. 
So um, the, the prana that you're getting from there is, it's like better because it's already, you know, the, the, the part that the body really needs. So that's why it's very good for vitality for other people as well. All right. And so it here, here it says you need the spleen to be, to be active because it says um, if the person's, okay, forget the, so if, if he is a person of higher vitality, then his probability of contracting disease is lesser. His body's defense system or uh, detoxifying and eliminating system would be likely to overcome a virus or a toxin. So that's basically trying to say that, um, okay, about the gray mist, and we, we finished it here, right? Vegetation. Okay, so um, what they're trying to say is that the, 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 the amount of vitality you have is directly proportional to your ability and your immune system and your ability to your, your tendency to fall sick. Okay, let me just move forward. So here it says diseased uh, used up energies, um, toxins and germs are expelled by the health predominantly via the pores. Same thing as uh, the author here has said, thereby purifying the whole physical body, all right? Uh, Master Chua doesn't talk about the excess energy because that would just complicate things. It's talk, talking about only from a perspective of healer, all right? And we'll come to why that's important later on in this chapter. Uh, the spleen chakra uh, apparently plays in a vital part in man's general well-being. A weak spleen means a weak physical body and low pranic energy level. So there you go. And then you have here. Um, so now, Obviously, like Sumi said, to add on, when, when you have all this energy coming in, we know uh, uh, in energy, the energy always flows from a higher potential to a lower potential, just like el electrical energy. All right, so um, this is a quote from the Psychic Cell Defense book, just to add on what Sumi was saying about the energy vampires. But they do it subconsciously, of course. All right. I think. Now, about this whole uh, part about the small particles, Sumi's already explained it. It's pretty straightforward. Basically, when you sweat, obviously the sweat molecules and everything, you need uh, orange prana to sweat. And this, uh, the, the sweat will correspondingly have a uh, etheric envelope as well. And uh, that is probably what they're describing here. And because of that, it gives off this mist. Okay. Also, if you remember when we talk about advanced pranic healing, when you look at uh, the aura of a person who has fever, it's a uh, grayish reddish uh, energy right? And the solar plexus has the reddish brown dirty energy. So maybe that's one of the reasons why it's all gray. Do we have a lot of questions? No, 18, but still, they need 10 minutes. We, even if we don't have any. So okay. we'll stop. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to add one more bit and then stop, uh, if that's okay with we'll, you. We'll do it together because I want to talk about what, what you, the, the, Vegetable kingdom. Yeah, I'm going to tie in. I'm going to add more about the health order when it comes later. Okay. Because okay. there's uh, almost 15 minutes. Yeah, we're supposed to end at 7.15. Okay. So, uh, we'll let you off now. Um, if you have questions, you can ask us. And then, uh, because yes, you would want to join uh, Sri Ram's session. If a patient suffering from tremors, possibly Parkinson's, will this have, patient have low rose, low rose color? Can this flow increase? Uh, Parkinson's, you see the spleen. We've noticed this correlation several times. Uh, I've noticed it when Master was healing. Multiple sclerosis, uh, Parkinson's, um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. What else? Uh, many bone muscular system that are very you know, deteriorating in nature. Their spleen was really, really weak really, really weak. It was almost not functional. It didn't know how to do his job. Like Masa was healing one person, and I remember this for multiple sclerosis. And the first thing he would do is he would heal the spleen. Okay, and then he would clean, energize the spleen, and then he would work on the other chakras. Uh, and then Masa Chua would go back and check the spleen. The spleen is depleted again. So the energy has been used and the spleen is still not functional properly. So again, the spleen was treated. Then after about 10 minutes, again, he checked the spleen. Again, the spleen was depleted. So there is a correlation. So you have to be careful with these uh, things. And, uh, the, and with that, the body doesn't even transmit the energy. All right. Uh, how many petals does the liver minor chakra have? We'll see that in the navel, but I'm not, I, I have no idea. Uh, cleansing and energizing the physical spleen or spleen chakra will make it stronger. 
Yes, it would, but you have to be careful because there uh, you might uh, uh, over energize the Ming Min. It depends if you're a proficient healer or at least done advanced pranic healing. Sumi, so each spoke of things connected with the respective chakra. Yes, uh, according to Theosophy, each spoke right is connected to the what you saw here in the diagram. It goes out through the spokes. See, if you notice the picture. Okay. If you notice the picture, from here it pulls in, gets converted, comes here, from the spoke it's delivered. Don't call it spoke, it's not really physical, huh? it's just energy, it just forms that channel because that's the route it's taken. So it looks like a more concentrated energy there because the energy is being compressed there, so it looks like a spoke, it's not really a, a spoke, all right? Maybe it is. Um, which color moves to sex chakra from spleen? I never said sex chakra and spleen. I said uh, spleen, navel, perineum, basic. Okay, no sex chakra. The, all the chakras except the spleen chakra are in line. The spleen is the only one that I think is not in line with the other chakras. Um, what about chi energy in the navel? Okay, uh, that we'll, re we'll talk about when we reach navel and see what he says. If, green's to, uh, if green goes to the navel, why do we draw it from the throat? Now, this is not talking from a healing perspective. They're talking about it, right? From the, from a, uh, the way the body uses it perspective. The distribution channel. Distribution yes. channel. Now, obviously, they have not revealed about the solar plexus here. So the channel distribution will be slightly different. But yes, the body requires a lot of green prana uh, to break down and digest the food. So a lot of green prana will be required. You have to understand that the body is a, has a lot of prana flowing in through it. The colors keep changing. When you, and the, and when it passes through each chakra, the color changes. It's not so one dimensional. When you bring divine energy here, and you bring it down, when you doing, if you learn the transmutation of sex energy, you bring it down here, as you bring it down here from red, it transmutes, transmutes, becomes rainbow color. So the, the chakras are also mini transformers, if you remember correctly. So what is happening in the body is um, very dynamic, uh, okay? But the body needs a certain harmony of colors and it needs a certain amount of colors to do specific functions. Like the body needs green to um, break down uh, and help with the digestive process. Um, the body needs orange to expel all dirty energy and uh, diseased energy and also used up energy. Okay, the body needs red for vitality and uh, feeding the muscles, bones, tissue and growth. The body needs yellow also for the muscles and bones. So based on what is required, it goes there. All right, so I hope that answers. We're not supposed to enjoy spleen of Italy, so how do we help them? Uh, it depends what level of healing you've been doing, right? You, you can energize it through the navel. You have to just check the spleen. You can energize it through the navel. It's actually very important to energize elderly patient. I would always start from the navel, navel and back heart. Anyway. Um, okay, this is a diabetes healing protocol. Uh, the protocol is in the book. Uh, advanced pranic healing. But the spleen is definitely affected in diabetic patients that I've seen. Is spleen chakra located near the spleen or does it move away like a lotus arising out of muddy water? It's located between the solar plexus and the navel. All right. It's located directly between the solar plexus and the navel as far as I know. And uh, at the bottom of the lower left rib. So if you draw a line from your nipple all the way down it will be there and located between your solar plexus and navel okay that's it I'm done. Yeah. all right people uh, so we'll end uh, now so you have a few minutes to unwind and then catch up for the next session yeah. some of the stuff is a little bit complicated to explain because uh, there are several levels of understanding and we, we want to just keep it open <laughs> All right, so shall we do the closing invocation? Or? Yeah. 
All right, All right. So let's close our eyes, connect down to the palate, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our teacher, Grand Master Chua. Lord Maha Guruji, mailing all the great ones, all the healing ministers, healing angels, especially the great teachers and masters of theosophy. We thank you all for the great, great blessings. Thank you for the tremendous light of knowledge, of wisdom, of understanding, uh, and especially a clearer understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everybody. Thank Up you, guys. Namaste. Have, a namaste. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on a Monday. Yes, Monday at 6.30. Take yeah. care. Bye-bye. See you guys.